Hello everyone, it's Rose Futal. In today's video, we will be covering various effective strategies that different regions rely upon for recycling domestically. In the previous video, we talked about how the international community exported most of their recycling to China, how this severely impacted the world when China stopped accepting foreign waste. If you've missed that video, the link will be in the description below. The Netherlands pioneered a waste hierarchy system known as the Lansing's Ladder. Prevention and reusing waste are the top priority. Recycling and high-quality energy recovery is the second priority. Disposing, burning and dumping waste on landfills as a last resort. It turns out that a lot of recycling isn't as effective as many believe it is. A lot of items can only be recycled a few times before they are too degraded for proper usage. Plastic has at most three lives. Paper only has a maximum of four to six lives. During the recycling process, its fiber shortens and loses quality. Aluminum, steel, and glass have infinite lives as long as they're not burned to produce energy. Product manufacturers need to change the way they package their goods. Innovation is needed to figure out what is the best ways to remove plastic from their packaging. At the start of 2019, Germany enacted stricter laws that placed the responsibility of recycling product packaging on foreign businesses. Under the Verpack G, all manufacturers, distributors, importers and online traders would need to register with a central authority, Zentrale Stelle. Furthermore, they would have to confirm that their packaging is involved in recycling schemes. Any company breaching the Verpack G law can face either market bans or administrative fines of up to 200,000 euros. Michael Klein, the deputy manager of the largest German carton packaging company, FKN, stated that the law also promises a reward for those who use packaging that is easily recyclable or made from renewable raw materials. Sweden sets a good example when it comes to cultivating a culture for reusing products. Many charity organisations would provide free collection services for items that a person would like to donate. This includes furniture, electronics and other heavy items. These items are then resold at second-hand shops, where the profits go to charity. Most neighbourhoods have recycling facilities nearby. More than half of the country's very accessible recycling centres also accept clothing. Furthermore, like in some other regions of the world, Sweden adopts the deposit return scheme. Customers pay a small deposit whenever they buy certain recyclable items. The cost of the deposit is then returned to whoever brings these items to recycling machines. These machines can be found at most Swedish supermarkets, so majority of people bring their recycling with them whenever they do their shopping. The director of the Dutch Waste Management Association, Dick Hochendon, believes that consistent and credible policy must be implemented as well as enforced to ensure a better quality of recycling. Without laws to regulate the waste and recycling industry, these companies would simply choose the most profitable option available to them. Ultimately, they are just businesses seeking to make money. They need to be financially incentivized to act in the public's best interest. In the Netherlands, Denmark, Sweden and many other countries, unsorted waste from households are burned to create energy. This process takes place in waste-to-energy plants, where gas emissions are filtered. In these plants, CO2 emissions are closely regulated and have to abide to the strict EU guidelines. This sort of energy recovery produces less pollutants than coal-to-energy plants. Still, this can't work as a long-term solution for processing waste. 
The Netherlands is one of the few countries that has consistently improved on recycling. Since 1994, the Dutch municipalities are obliged to provide an infrastructure for the separate collection of glass, paper and textile. This is in addition to the mandatory curbside collection of compostable and unsorted household waste. Almost all municipalities have a standard set of coloured bins where the purposes are the same. Black or grey bins are for non-recyclable waste, green bins for organic materials, blue bins for paper, cardboard or cartons, and orange for plastic material. This is the standard that desperately needs to be implemented in London, UK. Each of London's municipalities utilise different systems for sorting recyclables. This leads to a lot of confusion among its population. As a result, only 32% of households recycle in London. In my opinion, the world needs to prioritise reducing the production of plastic while reusing that of which we already have. For things to change, countries will need to invest heavily in their own domestic recycling facilities. So what do you think? Have you been affected by this worldwide event? Do you believe that large corporations would be willing to minimize product packaging? Do you know of any innovations to improve the situation that are being used today? If you found this video to be informative, please give it a like. If you want more of my content, please subscribe and ding the bell for notifications. It's been Fatally Honest. Ciao!